Talking about social media, interesting post here, courtesy of The Shade Room, that features the one, the only Lizzo. And she made a point here that I've currently trying to be, I've kind of been saying a little bit, which is maybe another second in and out, right? Or an out this year, 2023, sorry, will be to just stop believing people. <laughs> and I think I didn't necessarily clarify that properly beforehand. What I meant by stop believing people is that I think people in general, maybe it's just me getting older and realizing this thing, but people lie a lot. Like there's a lot of liars out there that just lie about their lives, about their achievements, about their accomplishments, um, about their awards, about their financial status, about their relationships, about their friendships. People just lie. They lie all the time. And sometimes they lie about the most mundane, easily provable um you know easily sorry disprovable facts which is really concerning especially somebody who has devoted their whole entire life to creating content online who just lie about a story and then you'll rewind and say no but here's what you said about the story two years ago so what is the truth and then they'll just and then they'll, then they'll act as if you're the one that's doing too much by by pulling up the tape on them from two years ago crazy place we live in but it is what it is so the fact that people lie so often i'm generally always going to go into things you know just just kind of with the point of view of like in the early days of maybe me watching stuff to do with public freakouts on subreddits where people would be recording people arguing online i remember one thing i took away from it after watching a lot of those clips of people arguing with somebody in a walmart somebody trying to run away with some expensive designer clothing and getting tackled by a security guard you know two women hurling racial abuse at each other, whatever it may be just these crazy videos of just humans outside just you know wanting to tear each other limb from limb one thing i realized that was quite common was that there was always this um, perspective of somebody that was filming the video from their smartphone and then kind of like goading the person on the, on the on the receiving end to respond or to say something like, oh, say that thing you said to me again. What do you say to me? What do you call me? That kind of thing, right? And I've realized across, like, oh, this is a narrative thing. They could try to control the narrative because what you don't see is what that person said all you see is them kind of going the person to saying some sort of racial slur but you don't get the bit that leads up to that section so clearly they've tried to frame it in a way of like oh this person just came up to me randomly whilst i was putting back my flipping basket or trolley and it just called me a flipping racial slur when clearly you know there's more to the story than meets the eye and i feel like a lot of the stories a lot of the you know um accusations and a lot of the just the things people say out there on the internet there's more to it than meets the eye so you have to kind of approach it thinking you know what i'm just not gonna i'm just not gonna believe people just based on what they say because they say it because people will be talking a whole lot of mess and it kind of leans a little bit to counterculture with what lizzo's saying here lizzo's kind of framed it in a very woke kind of like you know strange way because none of this really makes any sense but if i'm passing through it i kind of get where she's going from so this is a screenshot Take it from the shade room of Lizzo's Twitter where she says the following. This may be a random time to say this, but it's on my heart. Cancel culture is appropriation. There was real outrage from truly marginalized people and now it's become trendy, misused and misdirected. I hope we can phase this out or phase out this um, focus on our outrage on the real problems. So basically, you know, she's her saying the end of cancel culture, please, the end of cancel culture. I've said from the beginning, I've always thought cancel culture was less about, well, what I had assumed it was in the beginning was more so a way to kind of have some level of like social justice. Like if you couldn't get justice in the courts, um, if you couldn't get justice with the police, then you'd have to get justice in a social level by kind of embarrassing your accuser, right? Or embarrassing the perpetrator of whatever crime or whatever inconvenience or whatever argument or whatever disagreement, whatever you had during that time, right? That's what basically it would come down to. And it was kind of sad to see, right? People legitimately had horrible cases of like SA and R word and whatnot. And all they had was the ability to shame the person that did it to them in public and kind of let it be known. And then hope maybe the powers that be in the industry that they work in would distance themselves or should then lead that person to be in the financial ruin, blah, blah, blah. But it's not exactly like them going to prison. Because imagine if you were a victim of SA and R word, you'd want them to get everything. You want them to get prison time, stripped of assets, divorce, kids leaving them. You want them, you want the worst of the worst happen to them. So the fact that they would only get, you know, some barrage of hate online for a week and they might get dropped off a couple of shows, it can, you know, it maybe leaves a bit of a sour taste in the mouth. 
But that's what I thought cancel culture was about. Then it turned into a thing of like, let me just get people cancelled because I just don't agree with their points of view, which I never thought would be a real um, beneficial or constructive way to use that power or whatever, that kind of moment. It just didn't make any sense. Like this, just because you don't like what someone says or because they don't share your opinion, now you want to cancel them. It just seemed a little bit crazy and a real misuse of whatever that moment was in culture and society. And then, of course, it got its own, you know, it kind of gained a life of its own and it went in a completely different way. And by the end of it, people were kind of tired of it and it got really boring really fast. But I also think the other part of social cancel culture that I didn't like was this thing where a lot of people were doing where they would email and kind of contact people like the the knocking and the snitching i didn't like like if the story is out there already people are going out their way to contact brands and you know um partners that this person whoever this person is right is getting cancelled worked with in order to kind of get them cancelled i didn't like that pushing of the narrative was a bit too much for me in that regard like going out of your way to try and end somebody's quote-unquote career when the evidence is out there the story is out there let the natural course of sort of like you know life and the industry kind of take its course and slowly but surely they would obviously probably get their um their just desserts but another part of me thinks the other side of cancer culture that i didn't like was this weird thing that's kind of happening with the nepo baby discussion and now stay with me if it was like with me the nepo baby discussion the nepotism baby discussion right there was a clear um it felt like it was a, it was a chance just to highlight to people who are maybe struggling who are on the kind of the outside looking in who have been able to get into an industry such as entertainment that's very hard to get into and there's no real direct route in and it's all a bit just make it up just fake it till you make it you know figure it out along the way kind of thing work a crappy job here assist there intern here there's always really ways to get there. it's not really straightforward right it's kind of complicated and there's a lot of egos mixed in it and money and you know power imbalances and all this sort of madness it's hard to get in i always thought to me the nepotism baby debate was more so to give that person who's on the outside in who's struggling who's working a dead-end job and unable to make auditions and all this sort of stuff and they're looking at themselves thinking rah man i'm that 21 i haven't got any auditions and this person's like 19 and they're on a hit tv show somewhere it was important for that person to know that hey that person's 19 then a hit tv show not only you know because of this but part of the reason why they're there is because their dad is whoever some person at some network where the show's on or their mum is a screenwriter who knows the woman who wrote the screenwriter for the first episode and got her a flipping random whatever it may be but there was always a lack of understanding of like where why those people got where they got to now sometimes you know you could say hey you should be aware of those things if you don't know it you're a bit naive in the industry you're in but i think that was what the point of the nepotism baby um argument or discourse was about hey you know this is what's actually going on in the industry this should give you some solace that even though your journey is taking longer you eventually still will get there but this is why this person's there without much experience this person gets a deal off of just one a couple of pages of a script not even a fully fleshed out thing all these sort of things are what kind of going on and i feel like now the nepotism thing has turned into a weird sort of um way for the industry and maybe these broadsheets and these media organizations to remind people of just how powerful they are in deciding who our kings and queens are on tv and entertainment and i thought the same thing happened with counter culture um the organizations and the brands on this sort of stuff became really aware of how powerful they could be and it was a weird sort of reminder of what they could do to you so if the, if, if netflix say no if instagram says no all, sorts, all these platforms and networks and things that you use to kind of you know showcase your talent it was a kind of a way to of course professionally co- you know counsel you but also to remind everybody else to sort of stay in line and then i guess the saving grace of that was that people had podcasts or people had their own content that they were doing on the side so nowadays you can't ever really get cancelled unless you're somebody who primarily always relied on the institutions, right? You always relied on um, the corporations to kind of support your dreams and whatever it may be. Uh, but if you have your own stuff going on, it's very rare these days that you can get cancelled fully. Look what's happened to Crystalia. Crystalia has essentially been accused of running a sex cult, sometimes with underage girls, allegedly, and his fans are still sticking by him. Now, you can believe the allegations or not believe them, but the fact that he still has a career 
doing the thing that he loves in terms of stand up and recording podcasts goes to show that cancel culture doesn't exist because if you can, if you do have a fan base, you can sort of weather that sort of storm going forward. So I'm hoping, even though Lizzo didn't say this, I'm hoping in the future what we do see is more of a drive to really get the people who are doing you know bad things in society maybe illegal things maybe things that generally will put people into in danger instead of focusing our time on trying to counsel people who maybe have an alternative lifestyle or maybe have views that go against the grain or something those are things that we should just point and laugh at like a documentary or like a reality tv show or stuff they should talk about over a beer with your friends but there shouldn't be things that should be on the ticker tape of a news program there shouldn't be things that should be debated in congress and stuff or house of commons there should be things that just left to us lowly people to kind of debate about but it shouldn't be things that should you know result in you kind of losing everything because you think so and so isn't you know it's like me thinking now like there was this point in time in culture where if you came out and had something bad to say about Meghan markle you were basically in a weird way kind of accused of racism like people look to you as if okay you don't like us because she's black which you know is arguable but you know what i mean that's what people would look at you like and if you didn't have compassion with prince harry but now because of all the press they've been doing look how the conversations shifted around them it's not obviously full court press in terms of hating them but the acceptance of people being willing to hear you know um the other side of the argument as to why they're not really too keen on Meghan mark or prince harry nowadays is allowed more in public discourse so these things can change so to counsel somebody based on their opinion in a moment which feels a little bit crazy it feels a little bit contrarian it feels a little bit um edgelordy is a bit short-sighted because you never know in a couple of years that could end up being what everyone's thinking anyway and then you know that person lost a career and now everyone's kind of there rabbiting their flipping beliefs that they held a long time ago so i'm not really sure if that's what lizzo was getting at because i can't you know again she's kind of said it in work twitter yes queen speech but from what i was able to glean that was kind of what i felt like she was getting at so big up lizzo for standing up for that sort of thing because she clearly doesn't need to with her level of celebrity